Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the productivity system that I use to help manage my businesses, my career, just really getting by day to day. I'm gonna walk through the three things that help me the most, what those are, and then the basic workflow that I use to handle my day to day business. This is gonna be the three, two, one methodology. So I'm gonna share that a little bit later on the video, but please, before we get into it, like and subscribe, it means the world. All right, let's jump in. Now, before I get into it, by no means is this the perfect system. I actually am somewhat of a disorganized person. This is something new to me. I have found that this helps, so if you are disorganized or you just have trouble coming up with a system, this is really a system for beginners, so don't expect any elaborate processes or anything super advanced that you need to do to set up this productivity workflow. Really, if you are just somebody trying to get a little more organized, which is me, trust me. <laughs> and the reason why I use these three platforms is one to do is that is gonna be my task list. So whether it's daily tasks, weekly tasks, it's gonna help me stay organized and what I need to get done and check off those different tasks and to-dos. Now Notion is going to be a little bit more advanced. This is gonna be more my note-taking app. Um, and it's also gonna be ways that I can plan more elaborate projects whether that's YouTube videos, whether that's side business I'm working on, or really even meeting or meeting notes or career focused activities that I'm doing in my full-time job. And last but not least, Spark is the email client that I use. Email is not something I'm really a fan of, but if I have to use an email client, Spark is gonna be great to use. I'm gonna walk through why I use it and some of the different uh, practices and workflows that I use within Spark to just Help me remember to send an email or remember to get to-dos within emails and to do us. All right, let's jump in there. Now the first tool in the productivity workflow that I'm gonna talk about is Todoist and really the introduction of my 321 method that has worked wonders for me in my career and in my side businesses. And what that is, is three, two, one, essentially that's gonna be me categorizing the priority of tasks that I have to get done in any certain time frame, whether that's today or this week. And so what three, two, one means, and I'll use an example in my own to-do is to show this, is how I'm gonna prioritize things. So three, what are three things that I need to get done today? And whether I get these done or, or not, that's really gonna be the measure of my productivity for the day. So. I will outline three things in this color-coded blue uh, uh, format to say, all right, this is the timeline that I need to get these done, and this is also gonna be the order that I get these done in. And the three things that I need to get done today. And so within Todoist, you will see that I have three blue color-coded tasks here that represent, if I get all three of these done today, then it has been a productive day for me. Um, and this is really just gonna be my daily uh, task. And I always start with three, because at its very core, if I can accomplish three things today, then that makes me feel like it's been a productive day. You can add more to this. There's no magic rule that says it has to be three, but for me personally, based on what I'm gonna accomplish throughout the day, I'm gonna have my top three things to get done. If I get done more, if I wanna add to this list, that's great, but I just wanna basically get these done to set that, that framework. Now the two, these are gonna be two things that I need to work on during the week um, and preferably over the next couple days. It's not something I have to get done right away, but certainly a task or a project that I need to contribute to within the short term and something that I'm going to work on on that week. Because these are bigger projects, I limit the number here, so I'm only gonna focus on two during the week. Again, kind of like the daily tasks, if you have more and you wanna knock them out, great, but really focus on these two major things. So not only are we gonna get these daily tasks done, but then from a higher level, we wanna to contribute to these more week-long, month-long, quarter-long projects. And one, this is the most important, most critical, this is why I have it highlighted in red, is this is going to be the top, you know, number one guiding North Star thing that I need to get done, whether it's this week, whether it's today, I'm gonna to put a date on it, and I'm going to at least dedicate 
a certain amount of my time throughout the day to focus and contribute to this number one task that I must get done. And so a lot of times in, I will put this as a big project or it's gonna be a big deadline that needs to be met, a report that's gonna be super crucial to delivering to a client or if it's a side business of mine, it's um, really gonna be that next step forward to unblock anything that's currently blocking me and my businesses. And you'll also notice within Todoist that I have dates here and even specific times that I will block for these tasks. So I'm a big believer in time boxing where I will allocate certain tasks to get done within certain times because I feel like if I don't have a plan for the day, then it's going to go off the rails. It's just bound to whether I get distracted or I just have other tasks or requests come in. If I don't stay on track and I don't time box activities and there's going to be a ton of YouTube videos on time boxing. I won't get too much into it now, but certainly feel free to use 321 with time boxing and that is going to help you tremendously. It has helped me since I've started using this methodology and I'm able to get more stuff done. All right, so next on my list is Notion. I recently made the switch from Evernote to Notion as far as more of my note-taking app um, and, and journaling app. And the reason being is I felt like Evernote, the way I was using it, and even though I was a premium member, I wasn't getting a lot out of it. It really was me jotting down notes, but there was no organization to it. And so I made the switch to Notion and I've really started to utilize and like the templates that they've offered. And even as an up and coming YouTuber, um, I've used different YouTube video templates and, and that's what you see on the screen here. And this has been very helpful for me. Um, I've used Thomas's Frank template to get started. I'm gonna make some tweaks to this as I go along, but as far as coming up with video titles, the status of those videos, the publish date, um, and, and what tags and what the, what, how I want to organize my, my videos. This has been so helpful just to start with. It also allows me to create different video ideas and, and really outside of YouTube, I've liked it from everything from a task list that I'll also use with Todoist. Um, we're in Notion, I'm going to have more ideas for tasks I need to get done, whereas Todoist will be more of my check mark. And then also when it comes to journaling, a reading list. I even have a workout exercise calendar in here and how to get fit, my own personal notes, uh, how I want to track my macros, how I want to recover. I will use that within Notion. So such a fan and I've, I've loved it so far. Now the last platform I use is the most important and that's going to be email and what I use for email is Spark. I know there are a ton of different email clients out there and some have preferences of one or another. It's almost like picking what is your favorite burger, what's your favorite fast food restaurant. Spark works for me. I know other email services may work for you, but I want to go into why I like Spark so much and how, if you are thinking about switching email clients, how it could potentially fit into your workflow productivity. So jumping into my emails right here, um, one of the things I really like is it's well laid out. I could see my left hand sidebar, um, everything from folders I have to uh, pins, which are just going to be starred emails. Reminders if I snooze emails, I have snooze functionality, and then also if I have anything that's assigned to me. One of the great features within Spark is I can delegate either emails or t and treat them really like tasks and delegate them either to myself or to a teammate. And so in this case, I could just go here, leave myself a message, set a due date, and then assign this email to be delegated for me. And that way you almost treat it like a task list within your inbox. I also have Todoist set up to be connected to Spark. And so if I didn't wanna necessarily delegate or manage this task or this email within Spark itself, I can set this as a reminder within Todoist. And I'm already a fan, we've got through that. So here I just click save and this will show up within my Todoist platform and show as a task that I must get done. And I like to treat emails as tasks that come in. So any requests or anything like that that comes in, I'll create it as a task list and I'll remember to go back and then check that off the list. Spark also has the ability, if I were to click on email, I can pin email so these pins can reside at the top, especially within their smart format. I can keep really important emails at the top of my view and always top of mind. Or if I move back to the classic, it's just gonna show highlighted within the email 
uh, chronological string that I see here. I also can snooze emails. A lot of times we get emails that really aren't important or don't need our attention right away. So if I come in here, I have a bunch of different options to snooze emails, whether it's later today I wanna to tackle it or say even sometime next week, I can go ahead and snooze an email. Super, super important if I just don't wanna focus on it, it's gonna declutter uh, my inbox and then I can get to it at a later date. And if I jump into my snooze folder on the left-hand pane view, I can also see all emails I've snoozed. So if I do catch up, I'm a little ahead of schedule, I can go into my snooze section and start working on these emails that I've snoozed at a later date. Similarly, I can see emails that are assigned to me, whether assigned to myself or from teammates to then go ahead and tackle. All in all, I really enjoy Spark for what I do. It really has those three basic features that I need in order to manage emails and be able to really assign them to tasks and assign them as tasks, which is gonna help me just check things off my to-do list that I need to get done. All right guys, so that is it. That is my short and simple productivity workflow. I know it's super basic, but sometimes basic is all you really need. I'll let you know as I start to tweak these templates and get more advanced, but really, these basic things, the three, two, one, that's gonna be all you need. So if you haven't done it yet, tell me if you like it, tell me if there's anything that you do in your workflow, that's gonna be super helpful for all the followers that do come across this. I know productivity is something that we are all working on. And before I go, like and subscribe, that's gonna mean the world. It's gonna be great for the algorithm if we could get this up and going. So thank you so much for following along and I'll see you in the next video.